All righty, folks. We are back. Episode two, the high Number level two. podcast with your host, Kyle and Arena. What's up, guys? Thank to- you for coming back, tuning in. We are back at it again. Episode two. Um, before we really get into anything, I just want to thank everybody for the support on the first episode. It did way more numbers than I thought it was going to. Um, the love and support that I've gotten, um, social media, text messages, phone calls. It's been great. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for sharing and giving positive feedback. Um, It really does mean a lot to us. With that being said, hop over on YouTube uh, at the High Level Podcast and give us a subscribe, smash the like button, comment, share, and, you know, mostly just enjoy because that's what we're here for. So today's episode, guys, is going to be based on nostalgia. Now, nostalgia is a little different for everybody. We're 90s babies, so this may not resonate with everybody, but everybody can rock with nostalgia. Um, So before we get into that, I would like to start with a thread. Um, Let's get it. I think think you guys... I like a good thread. Everybody can relate to this. Because we all do it, unfortunately. We're all human beings, so we all do this. Um, But the thread is, what do you secretly judge people for? Immediately, I'm going to have to go with people who do not put their carriage back. Oh, man. That's the worst. The moment I see you in the market basket, New England grocery store, you would know. Market basket, kid. Mac a basket. The moment I see you unload your groceries and you walk away from that cart you just and leave, leave it, it in the middle of the parking lot. Not even necessarily always the middle of the parking lot either. You guys are leaving these carriages in parking spots, bro. Ignorant. Like it's I go to so pull into ignorant. a spot and there's a cot sitting there. I got to get out of the car. I got to go move the cart. Wait, you get out. Well, you just run it over. I mean, you could. I was about to say, I kind of love tap them That's fine. <laughs> that is fine. Um, I think mine is when people wear dusty Air Force Ones. How dare you? Damn, you're coming at a whole generation. I'm That's just you, Gen Z. saying. <laughs> how do you leave your house in a crusty, dusty, musty pair of Air Force Ones? They're like $100. You can't afford another 100 Like. There's all kinds of shoe cleaners out there, you know. It's just the audacity because it's like, imagine wearing a whole, you're going to a white party, all white, wearing a whole white fit, and you pop on those dusty, crusty, dingy, dingy (laughs) Air Force Ones. It's like, just like when men go out and buy numerous white tees because you wouldn't catch them dead in a dingy white tee. Why are you wearing dingy forces? You can't do it, guys. I'm sorry. You gotta be clowned. I apologize if I offend anyone who looked down I at don't. their feet right now and and is wearing a pair of dusty forces. But it's just unacceptable, guys. They're hundred dollar shoes. Not only are they dusty, but creased. Creased too. I mean, I mean, creasing it does happen. I mean, if you have mm-hmm. if the forces are clean and you got a little bit of crease, I know can your deal forces with that. etiquette. Okay. Just saying. low tops only. <laughs> well, uh, I, well, I have a high top pair of black forces. Black air forces are demon time energy. That's like New it's York. De- that's it's like demon time energy. That, ge- that you're gives about to like, go hit a lick if you're wearing any type of black forces. <laughs> that, that's given like black air forces give like the Bronx vibes or something like. Black Air Forces gives me you're about to rob me. <laughs> well, to be fair, I didn't buy the Black Forces. They were a gift, so I can't, you know, I can't go too hard on myself. Because, what a hood rat. And you know what? I wear those when, it, like, I have a lot of, like, Vans, so they're, like, um, the canvas kind of. So when it's raining out, you can't wear Vans. you got to throw on a pair of leather shoes, and I'm not going to wear my J's out in the rain, so it has to be the, the Air Forces. Personally, I don't know. Um, so looking on here, um, there's some replies to this thread. Someone some wrote, good ones in there. There is. Um, someone wrote people's self-awareness, like when they watch TikToks in a loud, out loud in a quiet room without headphones and not knowing how to act in certain establishments. Okay. That's like being on the red line 
and you have that crackhead. Oh my god, that's bumping their music. Yeah. Worst SoundCloud rapper music that they're playing. And of they, course, they got like the beats pill bumping. loud, and they're giving you dead eye contact. You like really, bro? Enjoy your music. <laughs> like, just this enjoy your shit. This one's good. Someone wrote, I live in New York City and often take the subway. When someone is watching YouTube or TikTok on their phone next to me, full blast, I ask, ooh, what are we watching? With an excited smile on my face. That usually prompts them to take their head- headphones out and watch privately. No, because I I can't do that. Because I have like an invisible like sign on my head that says like, you're weird talk to me and i feel like that's just Isn't inviting the somebody to talk to taking me. the tea in town you see a lot of things on the tea man i'm sorry um love our city <laughs> let's see what else we got here we have someone wrote leaving their shit in the way of others shopping carts cars etc okay that's yeah i i see it you know what else i judge people for Liking their own Facebook stuff. Yeah, you can't do that. If That's you're posting weird. on Facebook, don't be liking your own stuff. You know, you're you're posting on Facebook for clout probably anyways. And if you're somewhat popping, you're going to get likes on your Facebook and, and Instagram. And then it'd be more embarrassing when they're their only like. like <laughs> oh, God. Don't, delete the don't whole do it. post. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, someone wrote people's lack of awareness. I can't stand when you're in again, market basket and you're pushing your cart. Someone wants to leave their cart in the dead center of the aisle and stare at 30 different kinds of Mac and cheese. First of all, you know what kind of Mac and cheese you're here for. So just fucking grab it. Okay. And be aware of your surroundings, man. You're not the only person in the grocery store shopping. All right. I'm just that, that sends me that. Sends we need me. a little more decorum in Market Basket, to be frank. <laughs> Someone wrote things they decide to post online, which kind of is in line with what you said. Um, there was another one. When people don't clear their tables and leave rubbish Ugh. behind at food courts or fast food restaurants, that kind of grinds my gears too, because it's like, clean up after yourself. If you're if If you're in your house and you're eating... Do you just leave, you know, you go get McDonald's, you eat at the kitchen table. You're going to leave your McDouble wrapper sitting on your kitchen table? No, you're not. You're going to get up, you're going to throw it in the trash. So have the same courtesy when you're out to eat, people, please. Because people have, like, a mindset that, like, oh, somebody's getting paid to do this. Like, But that's, that's not mean. always the case. Sometimes that's the case, that's but it's not, not always. Nice. <laughs> um, I have another one for me personally, because there's so it? many good ones on here, and I just can't decide... Um, a lot of people are complaining about the shopping carts, so there's that. But um, mine personally, if you have a leather jacket and you don't moisturize that, leather, like you wear it out in the rain or you get caught in the rain with a leather jacket, it's snowing, whatever, you guys got to understand, you got to take care of your leather. You got to moisturize your leather jacket because you can't be out here. That's quality. You go to bend your arm and your friggin' jacket's cracking. You can't do it. Lube your jacket. It's very simple. I have a red thriller jacket, like Michael Jackson, OG. Shout out my Auntie Katrina. She got it for me for my 14th birthday, or maybe it was Christmas when I was like 14. That jacket still fits me. Guess what, people? It ain't crusty. It's moisturized, it's nice, and it's fly as hell. Period. Um, This is one more I want to go, because this is one that I, I found that I did like. Help rejecting complainers. Ugh. there's nothing worse than that someone's complaining and you offer to help them they say no and then they continue to complain no 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 no. once they de- decline that's where that's a wrap you don't get to speak about it anymore that's it once you speak about it after i've offered help and you declined you will be getting cussed out <laughs> just <laughs> someone wrote underneath that i call these people ask holes that's legendary Classic. right there that's great um so Anywho, we are going to talk nostalgia now. Do you want to uh, you want to kick us off here? Something nostalgic that we could, could be... So when we say nostalgia, we're talking music, movies, TV shows, candies, foods. I mean, you name it. Anything that you had growing up that we no longer have. And when you see it, you're like, holy shit, I remember that. That was dope. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Um... 
I would say like my favorite thing to think about a lot is this is a Massachusetts thing, but I always, always, <laughs> I always think about, um, oh my gosh, I just lost it. Oh, come on. Don't do that. No. Don't be doing that. It's on the tip of the tongue. On the tip. All right. I'll, I go. I'll you go. go. All right. And we all remember this one. When Snapple was in glass bottles. There's nothing better than a Snapple from a glass bottle. Now they're in plastic. Oh, disgusting. There's nothing better they than- They ruined my life with that transition. It, I just, things have gone downhill ever since then. Also, Peach Snapple is the best Snapple. Absolutely not. Comment, you know what? Comment on the video. Let us know what your favorite Snapple is because she seems to think it's It's punch. It's not. It, and I'm, and I'm going to give you guys a hot take. Snapple Apple ain't it. That's like bottom tier for me. I, I just, it, it don't do it for me. That's, you know, that's just me though. I, you know, um, what else you got? I'm taking it back. <laughs> he said not it. Okay. It's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just not. You know what? I think we have to bring it all the way back into internet. Oh boy! Just the soul internet. Are that we going we dial use tone now. here? Do, 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 do. Oh e my god! Get off the phone! I'm trying, I'm trying to, to use to the internet. Yep, I remember very vividly being at my nana's house in Malden, and my youngest aunt is only like four or five years older than me, so it was nice because we always had, like, I was able to vibe with my aunts because they were all like relatively my age. And we had the oldest computer probably known to man. Um, and that would happen all the time because people were always calling Nana's house. Because obviously, like, people had cell oh phones, but jumping. it wasn't like... <laughs> so, like, my aunt would be on, like, AIM or, like, the AOL messenger, like, trying to talk yes. to her friends. And, like, my Nana would just be yelling, like, get off the phone. Get off the computer. I got to use the phone. Like, and I, like, it just burned into my memory. It really is. Um, AOL was. Do you still remember your first AIM I username? Do. I do. It was Hot Headed Kyle sixty three. Mine was really bad tempers, but with a U instead of an E. Wow, what are the odds that we both had something that had to do with like <laughs> being hot headed or just like having a bad temper or something like? That's we thought funny. like having an attitude in middle school was like so edgy and cool. Um, I got a, oh, this one's a good one. I scrolled by this one earlier. Um, eventually guys, we're going to be able to kind of show you things that we're looking at still getting used to the video yes. editing and the production part of this. So just bear with us. But do you guys remember the Crayola stamp markers? Oh my gosh. The heart, the heart. So right here, I see a sun, a blue kind of sun, an eyeball, a smiley face. It's the heart. There's the heart, the dog print, the kissy lips, a yep. swirl, um, a leaf, and then I can't really tell what the, a star, a footprint. Um, so those were lit. Those were litty. Yes. You know what else was a good marker? Because Arts and Crafts was big in Woburn. Joyce Middle School. Let's go. Um, the Mr. Sketch markers. That yeah, like, the Mr. Sketch. The ones that smelled uh, good. That yeah. root beer and that orange. Well, how about, I don't know, most people, I mean, this is still kind of a thing because my son Ryan came home from school from the book fail one time with the smensels. If you had a smensel in school, everybody was trying to jack you for your shit. Everybody. If you Guys, had a smensel, let me smell that. <laughs> then you never got it back. I hope you all balled out at your school store. I used to ball out. Oh, me too. I used to, but my dad was always like. He could be a prick sometimes. Like he'd be like that. Like I'd be the only kid that didn't have money for the the Scholastics yeah. Book Fair. Some like not all the time. Like I'm not hating on my dad. Like, That's heartbreak. But like some sometimes I was. That's that a child's one kid. moment to shine at and, the Scholastic Book Fair. And, it's, and what I like is that those aren't like the book fairs aren't nostalgic because they still do them, and I think that's dope. They do. They still do them. 
I love that. Like reading is fundamental, guys. And for the record, anytime my son asks me for money for the book fair, he gets Absolutely. it. Absolutely. He gets it. Now I remember what I forgot. Okay, That's hit a Massachusetts. Me. Hit me. What thing. do we got? This is gonna this is gonna bring back some memories, I at least I for know. me. I hope I know what you're about to say. The Meadow Glen Mall. Oh, the Ghetto Glen Mall. The Ghetto Glen Mall. Meadow Everybody, my Massachusetts ghetto. people that are watching this, you guys know exactly about the Meadow Glen Mall. I got my my ears that are pierced. I got my ears pierced there. What was there? Um, I got my first pair of Air Forces from that Foot Locker. You better not have let them get dusty. Never. Crusty, musty Air Forces. <laughs> um, Old Country Buffet was there. <sighs> I mean, that was like... Beloved. It was bottom tier food, but for the price and, At that and the age, selection, that, it didn't that matter. That shit was gourmet. It didn't matter. <laughs> what else was there? Wasn't there a... um? There was a Tello's there, wasn't there? Got my first pair of Brazilian jeans and my first <sighs> pair of lace underwear there. <laughs> I used to get the... Like the SpongeBob. Like with the shit in the... In the um The MySpace teams. backgrounds. Yeah, the MySpace backgrounds. <laughs> T-shirts, absolutely. <laughs> oh my god! Love that. There was a friendlies in there too. There was a friendlies yeah. at Ghetto Glen Mall. Yeah. I don't know where the f- yeah. guy was, and there but used to be a Papa Gino's there too. That I remember. I it used do to be remember right the Papa Gino's. I do, and I honestly, to me, like I never really considered the Meadow Glen Mall a mall because no. there was nothing in it. There was nothing of I think- importance. It was like same caliber as Woburn Mall before it became Woburn Village. Like when the Woburn Mall was like yeah, the Woburn Mall had um, Sports Sports Authority, Authority. a locksmith store, Radio Shack. They had a a really good cigar shop in there that I used to go get cigars for for like my camping trips and stuff. Fredericks, I know. Like our parents remember Fredericks. I don't. I have no idea. It's a lingerie store. It's where every girl went to get her first bra. So I know like we're kind of all over the map here with like different types of nostalgia, but it's just flowing. And one that we all can relate to, VHS tapes. Oh my god. My mom has the worst story about me with the VHS tape. She loved Jungle Book and I got a hold of the tape and I got my little little itty bitty fingers in there and I just pulled it right. No, you didn't do that. To Jungle Book. That's disgraceful. Why would you do that? I still have all my... I baby. (laughs) I still have all of my um, VHS tapes, like all the Disney I have. Shit, when I was growing up, my VHS go-tos were like Batman, like Michael Keaton Batman. Wow. Batman Returns. Like all the Batmans, Batman and Robin with George Clooney. The Orange Rugrats. The orange rug, rat. you guys remember the '90s babies? They know. They know. They know. The orange cassette tape, and Tommy Pickles was a dick to his little brother in that movie. Made me so sad. Poor Good Dill, right? Chucky. Can we just talk like on that topic really quick? They named him Dill Pickles. I love it. Like, I freaking love and it. And I didn't even catch that till like many years after Rugrats wasn't even a thing anymore. And that's sad because it's pretty blatantly obvious that they oh. named their son Dill Pickle. But um, what else we got here? You have any other ones that you can think of? Um, well, I do think of LimeWire. Yeah. Um, that's where we were getting our music. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> I'd be so mad when I thought I, I downloaded my yeah, jam. Yeah, I know. Put my, my skull candy headphones in and that plays sick. Here's one, something along the lines of that. Do you remember the website you used to have to go to? Like if you couldn't get a song off LimeWire or something, you were doing the like video to MP3 converter and like, yeah, that was, oh, yeah, it was what in a my time. engineer phase. Okay? On the iPod Nano that was like this big. iPod commercials. Like, remember, it would be like a colored screen with like a black silhouette and they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, here's one. Here's one. I was actually talking about this. My coworker brought it up to me and said I should mention it on the pod today. But. Was, do you remember when Burger King was giving out like 
the the plates and the cups, like all the Disney characters and stuff. To this day, shout out to my Nana. She is the best. She still has all of these. There was like Hercules. There was um. They did Disney, like they did a lot of Disney. All all, yeah, they were they they were all over Disney. Were they like they were kind of like squarish like that, right? No, they they were they were full size plates. Like oh, they, I'm thinking of the glasses, though. Remember they did the glasses? I remember they did that, but I think we often forget that I don't think those came from Burger King. Those were Welch je- uh, jelly jars oh, that were, God. like, collectible yes. that you saved yes. and you used as cups. Yes. My Nana has all this stuff still. Yes. And I oh love it. God. Like, she never got got rid of anything. Take That's why I love a that one. time. A time. Honestly, though, that really was a vibe. This isn't really like a 90s throwback, but it pertains more to just millennials. But I would definitely say like silly bands. Oh, that yeah, but I I don't silly consider bands. that nostalgic cuz that wasn't like too too long ago. But that was just like like a very short stint. That was like a those weird. were very short lived. I used to steal everybody's silly bands at school. Everybody's. Let me see that. Which one you got? I'd put it on. For, like just walk away or something. Just like it low key is nostalgic because we've been out of high school for like eleven years. Eleven years. years. Year. Yeah, that's all right. I'll give you that one. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it a little more back. Um, my first game system. Oh snap! Nintendo sixty four. Actually, was it Nintendo 60? It had to have been something. It was either Game Boy Color, Nintendo 60. I think I got them all at the same time. But one thing I thought was cool was my dad's mother, so Nana Main, she saved my dad and my uncle's original Super Nintendo. So when I lived in Maine for that short stint that I lived in Maine, oh my gosh, I was playing so awesome. the same Super Nintendo that my dad played. That's that fire. my uncles played. That's so fire. Like, I remember playing, like, you used to play Madden on there, and it was like, Madden has come such a long way. I know you're not, like, a big video game girl. Like, you don't know too, too much. But, like, Madden came Galaga. so... All right, fair enough. And then, you know, you have um, GameCube. That was my first console. That was your first console, With GameCube? the Zelda, I think it's, like, Wind Waker or something like that. Or Windwalker, that was fire. I think my favorite, and this is like kind of random because there's so many good GameCube games out there, and I can't even remember most of them. But my favorite GameCube game was Luigi's Mansion. There was just something like that hit about, like, because like you got to think too, like Luigi was always like the side piece, and then he got his own game. Like nobody true, ever cared true. about nobody Luigi. Nobody cared about Luigi. And then he got his own game, and like people fucked with him. Yeah. Once, once Luigi got his own game, he was solidified in the game. Like he, Facts. people like, Facts. what else? Um, there was another couple more GameCube games. Um, Pokemon Coliseum. I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember that one. I was just, I was such a Zelda girl, like from GameCube, even from Nintendo 64. Like I played all of them. Majora's Mask. Ooh, that was, that was my favorite. Or the, the, the Ocarina, Ocarina of Time. Time. Oh my God. Do, do, do. I love Ocarina of Time, bro. Yes. Um. Obviously, everybody fucked with um. And this wasn't. This was like a multiple consoles, as long as it was Nintendo. Obviously, Super Mario Smash Kart, Bros. Super Super Smash Bros. Anybody could catch it. I was Metal uh, Doc Doctor Mario. Anybody could catch it. Any, I was Kirby any, every trip. Matter of fact, every guys, trip. why don't you guys comment um. Who was your favorite character in Super Smash Bros? I'd love to know because there was so many different people had their preference. Like if if you were solidified in Super Smash Bros, you had one person like like I know my my buddy um Jeff that I grew up with up in Maine in the short stint I was there. He played as Kirby always. And Me he too. would smoke motherfuckers with Kirby. And, and he's I like never this understood big. it. This I big. loved Kirby. You'd get sucked up. <laughs> Yup. Then what? Then what were you gonna do? Nothing. Cause Kirby's that guy. Um I kinda wanna transition a little bit into TV shows. Is that what I think? It that is. is. I have a picture of Zaboombafu. Right? That's how I say it? Zaboombafu? Yeah. And I think that monkey died too. Stop. I don't even want to know. Didn't that. he? I think he did. I think he I'm did pretty too. sure he died. 
I'm pretty sure he died. Um, no, that makes me so sad. I'm trying to think. What channel was that on? I feel like that was on like that, basic, basic kids. Wasn't that like PBS? Yes. Wasn't that PBS kids? And I used to love the commercial like, thanks to your viewing because of you, like, you know, you fund these shows. I'm like, wow. Yeah, you felt me. so cool. You're like, wow. I'm making a change. I'm the reason this show exists. <laughs> uh, what's the, oh, there was one I just had, Dragon Tales, bro? Fam? The Dragon Tales? Do you remember Sagwa? The Siamese cat. No. People, in the comments, I need you to remember Sagwa, the Siamese cat. Because people try to play like it wasn't there, and now I'm starting to second guess myself. But I'm pretty sure it was a show. I don't remember that, but let us know what your favorite nostalgic TV show was from when you were growing up. Because I think my favorite nostalgic, like my, Mm. my jam was out of the box. Do you remember that? Out, out of, of the, the box. box. Out of the box. I would say my favorite. It was a cartoon. It was Oswald. Oswald. Wow. And then runner up is Roly Poly Oli. Oli, that was gonna I was gonna <laughs> say that one. Those two were wow. my jam. Um. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What was your favorite? Like, we'll just say, like, obviously we were born in 95. So people love to say, oh, you were born in 95. You're not really a 90s baby. Yes, because when you were younger, mm-hmm, I count. you were in the 2000s. But let me just say this. Even if I was younger in the 2000s, my families were still living like it was the 90s. Like I was putting, Facts. I had a boom box and, and my dad would buy me empty tapes. I would stick those tapes into... Yep. the radio yep. on Jammin' 94.5 and I would press record on all my favorite songs. I used to have tapes. We know what cassette tapes are. Have so tapes. Let's be real. All right. <laughs> we and count. Ju- <laughs> I'm just, yeah, we are 90s babies. I don't care what anybody yeah. has to say yeah. about that. I was born in 95. Okay, I was five in 2000. Doesn't matter. I'm a 90s baby. I always will be. Um, But what I was going to ask you was this. What would you say your favorite 90s sitcom is? Ooh. And guys, let us know yours if you want in the comments. Let us know what your favorite 90s sitcom is. Oh my gosh, that's hard. Um, I know mine. Tell me. Seinfeld. I, I don't know if that's technically considered 90s, but that was on the telly in my house at my dad's. Always like my dad was a Seinfeld guy, and to this day, I love Seinfeld. Everybody hates Seinfeld. I fucking love Seinfeld. I don't know if it's a 90s show, it might be. I think it might have been early, early 2000s. I don't think so. You know what? I'll For Seinfeld, but the one that I want to say that I loved growing up, but I'm pretty sure it was like probably like 2000, 2001 it debuted, was that 70s show. I, uh, people are gonna hate. But um, I don't like that '70s show. I love. I just don't do it. That I don't 70s like it. Show. Loved it. Um, loved. so Seinfeld aired on NBC from July fifth, nineteen eighty nine, to May fourteenth, nineteen ninety eight. So there you go. There's your Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld. I don't know why. Like it's. It's just not good humor to me. It's like kind of dry, but like. But it's not good dry. It's like, I don't even get, I can't even do, what is it? The, uh, I can't even remember what it's called, but I can't even fake laugh to it. I just. You can't give a cur- courtesy, courtesy laugh. laugh? Yeah. yeah. That, sidebar. Don't you ever, Kurt, not you, but whoever, don't ever me give me a courtesy you. laugh, bro. If I'm not, if it ain't funny, just don't laugh at it. Yeah. Don't give me no courtesy laugh. Oh, Please. Trust me, if I won't Please. find something funny, I ain't laughing. Please. Um, Believe that. There's a couple more nostalgic things I want to hit on before we move on to like our segments and stuff. Um, one of them is definitely when you used to go to Wendy's and everything was yellow. Oh. You know what I'm talking? You know what I mean? The, the, and it was folded in the foil. It was folded in the foil, nicey, nicey. Um, when the, the nuggets were actually made with white chicken breast meat, mm, oh. the, nothing like old school Wendy's. Oh my god! You have, you the, have, yeah. There's two places. 
that if you were from Massachusetts and all my people from Mass, you guys are going to, you you already you know what it is. your top. Good times? Bonkers. Just let you know, my mom was a waitress at Good Times. And I used to get the hook up, okay? Hook up. I remember having, like, some of my oldest memories are having my birthday at Good Times or Bonkers. And one thing I remember specifically (laughs) is I was having a birthday party there one year, and my nana, my mom's mom, uh, God rest her soul, love her to death, miss her daily. Um, my fondest memory there was like, I loved the Jurassic Park game for some reason, cause I was a big Jurassic Park kid. And like my fondest memory of that was like on, I believe it was my, I want to say it was like my fourth or maybe fifth. Cause I remember my sixth birthday was at bonkers. And I remember like, I don't know why, but the, you remember the big, like what, I don't even know what you call that. It was like a jungle gym, like you know what I'm talking about? You went in and it had like... Yeah, I would call it I don't it even know what you call that. It's a but jungle gym. I guess so, right? A right? jungle gym. I remember getting lost in there one day. Oof. Freaking out. And as a child, freaking that's big out. and you're freaking out. Oh yeah. my God, was I scared. And then I think they used to like send employees in there just to kind of monitor what was going on. I remember clinging to that man's leg. <laughs> Where's my Baby dad? Baby Kyle Where's clinging onto the dad? leg. I can't find my dad. <laughs> Oh, God. I miss bonkers. There was rumors that they were supposed to open up in Square One Mall. Never happened. I never heard that rumor. Yeah, well, man, I'm pretty sure I heard that rumor. That's that they crazy. Were gonna, yeah, they were, they were trying to put bonkers in the Square One Mall. I have a good throwback. <laughs> so, I guess it's a good... I don't know if people remember, but the commercial of the Danimals yogurts... And Zach and Cody or Dylan and Cole Sprouse. Oh, Sprouse. yeah, yeah. I Whoever do remember. won that sweepstakes, show yourself. I know. <laughs> I know. You know, I tried so hard to win those sweepstakes. We all we all did. We all did. Show yourself. We, we wanted it. Um, What else? What else you got? I mean, there's so many, like, it's hard because we're trying to keep, we don't want to, like. I don't want to overwhelm you guys, but there's just so much. There's so much, and, we, you know, we're not going to keep you guys here for an hour and 20 minutes on. I mean, we could, but I think 40, 45 minutes is is pretty enough time to captivate. You know who, captivate. it, like, embodies the early 90s or, like, early 90s, the early 2000s, late 90s, is Billy Mays. Yeah. But wait. There's more. more. Oh my God. <laughs> R.I.P. Dan- He's dead. Yeah. Oh, I think that was no. That was me. <laughs> no, that was that me. was you. I felt it in my <laughs> chest though. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to play that back and hear it. <laughs> I don't even know where that came I from. I thought it was me because <laughs> I felt it in my chest, and I thought it was me. <laughs> oh man, you you good? You good, fam? You good, fam? <laughs> <laughs> um a couple of cartoons I want to throw out there as well. Ooh, um yes, let's get it. I I want to I want to stay. Well, first of all, I, if you can't see on the Zoom, I have a Mr. Krabs hat on strictly because we're talking nostalgia today. So obviously SpongeBob is nostalgic for all of us. Got the brats. Um it kind of, but SpongeBob's kind of whack now. We won't go there. Um I I don't want to I don't want to go Nickelodeon road. I want to go Cartoon Network road because that was very much into all the cartoons Powerpuff from Cartoon Girl Network. We're talking way. Powerpuff Girls. We're talking Dexter's Lab. Johnny Bravo. We're talking Johnny Bravo. Tom We're talking and Jerry. Tom Scooby and Jerry. Doo. Scooby-Doo. Um, Codename Kids Next Door. Codename Kids Next Door. We're House talking for Imaginary Friends. Cow and Chicken. Ren and Stimpy. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Ren and Stimpy was Nickelodeon, I believe. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it was Nickelodeon. That just doesn't I seem like a Nickelodeon show. And how about this? Uh, why don't you guys let us I feel, know? I feel like Cartoon Network was like a little more mature with their humor than Nickelodeon. Well, we all know about what goes down at Nickelodeon. Yes, but I mean like not not that kind of mature. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one more I wanted to say too. I forget. Uh, it was a Nickelodeon show. 
Nickelodeon or Cartoon no? I'm Network? sorry. Yeah, yeah, not Nickelodeon. Uh, Cartoon Network. Um, Captain Planet. Do you remember Captain you know Planet? What? I counter your cap- Captain Planet for Freakazoid. Freakazoid. Oh, do you guys remember the Time Squad? Oh my God. Whoa. That was legendary right there. If you montage in my head. Let us know, guys, what your favorite nostalgic cartoon is growing up. Doesn't have to be uh, Cartoon Network. Could be anything you want, but let us know. Um, another one that just popped up, and it's not a cartoon, but do you guys remember when Walmart's logo was the friggin' smiley face, and they and would the just old have men would hand out stickers. You would be walking through Walmart. And you felt like someone was watching you because somebody was watching you, okay? They had this smiley face everywhere. You would roll look back. into rollback roll prices. prices, fam. Oh, Jesus. Um, another thing that's nostalgic that I just I don't know what made me think of this. And I don't even know what they are called. And I remember my auntie Sarah used to collect them. They were like they looked like poker chips, but they had different like things on them. Like I remember they was like there was Nickelodeon ones. There was He-Man ones. There was all kinds of like different, and they looked like poker chips. I don't even know what they were, where they came from, but I remember sneaking into like my Nana, like she had so much stuff in her room, like everywhere, but there was this one drawer in the bottom dresser and there was just these, I want to know what they're called. And I feel bad for bringing it up, not knowing what they're called and leaving everyone like on the edge, like what the fuck is this guy talking about? But to me, that was nostalgia because when I think back being very young, I used to steal those from my auntie all the time. <laughs> um, what do you got? Anything? Um, Let's see. You know what's a good one? Speaking of, to circle back to Scholastic Book Fair, Magic Treehouse Books. Magic Treehouse Books, absolutely. Um, I used to just, I'd get lost in those. I was a big comic book kid too. Like I used to love comics. I didn't get into comics slash mangas until like, I don't know, eighth grade, eighth grade going into ninth grade. Magna. People say magna. It's manga. I know it is. (laughs) Don't disrespect people. Oh, this one's kind of, uh, I don't know if you would consider this nostalgic, but back when you used to have to pop that cassette tape into your car with the cord on the end yeah, with to the listen audio to jack. music, yeah, and it sounded <laughs> terrible, yeah. And if you yep. twisted it, it sounded all staticky, yeah, that was Very. terrible. What a time to be alive. Um, Wow, that's a throwback. Flintstone one. vitamins. Flintstone I can, vitamins. I can taste it. Disgusting, like. Chalk, the worst flavored chalk, man. Uh, I got one too um, that I just saw. Kellogg's used to do the color changing spoons. I wouldn't you know that? because oh, my mom not, yeah. didn't allow me to have any fun childlike cereals because she was crunchy. Yeah, Raina grew up um, very crunchy, eating uh, bran flakes, um, corn flakes corn with flakes. banana and strawberries. You're like, mom, no it's sugar. not sweet enough. All right, here's a banana. Make it enough. Um, I know a lot. I I feel bad because we keep bouncing like from all different variations, but it's flowing. Um, wait, I got one. Go ahead. It's going up in in front of class, wearing your freshest fit to go use the manual pencil sharpener. The manual (laughs) pencil shop. I would sharpen my pencil. My pencil would Just be this to show big. Off the I fit. would sharpen my pencil down to this. Okay. <laughs> Just Literally, because I holding I, it like this to sharpen and, it. And you know why I was doing that? Because I wasn't wearing dusty Air Force Ones. I was wearing crispy, clean, low top white Air Force Ones. And there you have it. There was another one. I keep. We're scrolling. losing recipes. We're losing recipes. People, keep your forces crispy. Please. I, I'll say it before I said it again. I'll keep saying it. Don't you dare leave your house in the disgusting, dusty ass Air Force Ones. You know what else is a good throwback? Because I'm pretty sure they got rid of them within like the past couple of years. What's is that? the uh, animatron uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, yeah. They don't do animatronics anymore. Yep. Yeah. Thanks to what is it? 
Ryan's jam. What is it? Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, yeah my son's obsessed with Five Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, he he was. That now, was his. He yeah. He had a short obsession for a little bit. He plays. <laughs> he plays the um gorilla tag. Now these kids are playing like this on VR. And you literally, you're a gorilla and you're just, you use your arms to run like this oh and they just gosh. run around and I guess play tag. These kids are different. I know. They, you know what a throwback like is? Going outside and playing outside until Man street hunt, lights bro. come on. <laughs> you want to hear a good one. And this isn't necessarily nostalgic. I mean, I guess it's nostalgic because we're getting older now and t- like the memories like this are nostalgic. Are changing. <laughs> so obviously like I grew up in Winthrop. It's... I think 1.3 square miles big. It's a peninsula. Very small town. You could walk from one end to the other in 15 minutes. Um, we used to have a bunch of me and my buddies. We all had like the wa- the official walkie talkies that could go like. So we yeah. would we would have like a 30, 40 person game of manhunt. But we all had walkie talkies. So like one of us would be up in the highlands. The other one's down in the point. The other one's. You know, in the center of town, and we just all be like, yo, wait, where game. are you? Where are you? Do you see, like, and it would be dope because, like, you'd get caught. Like, there wasn't, you know, there because we would do, like, multiple people were looking for you. Like, it just wasn't one person looking for everybody. There would be, like, five, six, seven kids looking for the other yeah. 15, 20 of us. And, uh, yeah, like, that. those times were just so much fun. Like, I miss being a kid sometimes. Adulting sucks. You know what else is a good throwback? Gym class, and they would bring out that rainbow parachute. You oh know my it was God. about to be a lit gym I used class. To do, yeah. Yep. And then you sit on it, and then you got the little dome over you. That was that was the time. Is that? That needs to be it's brought a, up. A Nokia phone. And yeah, the Razor. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. I saw a cool TikTok. I wish I could find the name so i could give them credit but they were talking about how it is so different now compared to then when it comes to phones like back then choosing your phone was such a big deal big deal big like do deal. i want the chocolate big deal. do i want the sidekick oh, the do chocolate. i want the rumor do i want the razor i never had a razor my first phone was an Nextel. my first phone was an Nextel Should too we went yeah. And I, my dad used to like hit me up and be yelling at me. And uh, if you guys remember, Mute. you yeah, you would just hold the button <laughs> down where you would like hold it to talk, and it would just go. Ee! So I would just like he'd be yelling at me. I'd be holding the button, and then I'd let go. He'd still be going. I'd hold it again. My mom is like kind of like, I like to say she's because she's on the cusp of like Boomer and Gen X. So I call her Boomer X. Boom X. And she was pretty savvy with technology. And when she got me my first next telephone, she made it for direct connect only. I couldn't text. I couldn't call. I couldn't go on the internet. She knew what was up. Wow. Yeah. Um. All right. I think I, I think it's time we maybe segue into some threads. What do you think? Yeah. Because we throw are some threads at, uh, at me. We're at forty three minutes. So. Um. I want to do a am I wrong? I kind of like people took well to the am I wrong? I got a lot of feedback on that. Am Hit me, I baby. Wrong? Hit Alrighty. me with your best shot. I got gotcha. you. So this one here says, am I wrong for feeling weird? My boyfriend keeps bringing me around girls he tried or did sleep with while we weren't together. My 25 female boyfriend, 29 male, and I have been together almost four and a half years. We have had many issues in the past that resulted in us breaking up many times which we regret and work which we regret and work on things to make our relationship better. Lately things have been really good outside of the normal rifts or disagreements. One of the things he says he needs for me is for me to be more open and willing to go out more, which is very fair because I'm a homebody and can go months without going out to a bar. I told him I'd put in more of an effort to do the things he enjoys because I do enjoy going out with him most of the time. Last night, he wanted me to go see a show his friend was putting on, which was fine because I was excited to go out with him, even though it's not really my kind of scene or vibe. I knew his friend group would be there, and that's fine because I get along great with all of them. My biggest issue is that during the times we had broken up, he immediately started searching for new girls and trying to hook up. This included people in his friend group who I, who now I have to see at random events and parties, and it makes me really uncomfortable. Last night, his buddy was on stage and his group of friends wanted to hype him up by having them all get on the stage and dance around. Cool, by all means, have fun. 
but my anxiety doesn't sit well with the thought of jumping around on stage to music I'm unfamiliar with, so I stayed in the crowd and basically realized I was watching the man I love jump around in a group of people that included a girl he very recently tried to sleep with, and it kind of killed my entire vibe. I went home, and when he got home, I tried to tell him why I felt weird and said, I know I've been saying... I'm sorry, I just lost my place. And I know I've been saying... I know I've been drinking and could be overthinking it, but it but it made me incredibly uncomfortable. He got upset with me, saying I always ruin our nights out and that I'm not fun, and that it's not his responsibility that I feel insecure. I don't know if I'm wrong here or not. I know I don't feel comfortable with that, but I also know he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't speak to her or acknowledge her at all. So I'm up so I'm not even upset with him at all even in the slightest, but his reaction to me sharing my feelings makes me even more anxious than I already was. He said I made it into a huge deal, but I wasn't trying to at all. I just wanted to share what was on my mind so I didn't have to sit with those thoughts. How do I let him know I didn't mean for him to take it so negatively and that I just needed to express myself without making things worse? This isn't the only girl I've had to be in a close setting with that he tried to hook up with while we weren't together. This is at least girl number three. Let me hear your thoughts before Sheesh. I get in that ass. <laughs> uh, so, first and foremost, you never ever put your girlfriend, the woman you love, your wife, whatever, in that kind of situation. If you know that there's girls that you smashed that are already there, and you know that I smashed them or tried to smash them, I'm not bringing you there. I'm not bringing you there. I'm hitting up my homeboy like, yo, who's going to be there? If he says fucking... Michelle, Trisha, and Felicia are going to be there. And I know that I made out with that one, finger blasted that one, and hooked up with that one. I'm not bringing you there. Why? So you can feel uncomfortable? You're wrong for that, man. I, my biggest thing, just dating in general, is I've always, every person I've dated is, I do not take well to embarrassment. Do not put me in no situation. do it. Where you're going to have some other girl have the upper hand on me and have me embarrassed. That is so embarrassing. Like, I would get belligerent after that. Like, she kept her cool for that. Like, you're better than me. <laughs> like, I just, I don't. I think she's absolutely not in the wrong for feeling how she feels. But I also feel like, girl, if you know that your man is having you around women that he smashed, like. That's shysty. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be with him. That's you shouldn't shysty. be with him. It's you shysty. shouldn't be with him. That's just no, no. No, I don't think so. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. Yes, and if you've had situations like that or know somebody or just, I just want to hear. Let us I know. know. Fill us in. Um, really quick before I do another thread and we roll into. Um, would you rather? Couple. Yeah. Um, I just want to say if you guys are still here, I promise you we're we're almost done. Um, but. Please hop over to the High Level Podcast on YouTube and you better subscribe, like, share, comment, hop on your socials, share it there, let your friends know, let your family know, let everybody know. Yep. Hop on there, please smash the like button, Shout subscribe. Shout it from the Zaco. Please, please, please. That's right. Um, so, okay, I got one more thread, then we'll do Would You Rather and we'll get the hell out of here. Um, this is a, a, a little thread here that says... Guys will be like, there he is, or the man, the myth, the legend, and it's just some dude named Greg. I'm not going to lie. That's cocky. I'm so guilty of that. I'm like, there he is, my guy, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm so guilty of that. That's me. And I maybe, it, I don't know. I've never heard anybody of color say that, so it yeah. must be a Caucasian thing. <laughs> if y'all saying it's a Caucasian thing, then it's a Caucasian thing. Um. Uh, I love being able to say that's that white people shit while dating somebody white. I love that for me. <laughs> All right. Um, let's let's roll real quick into You ready for some nostalgic would you rather's? I'm ready. Hit me. Would you rather Silly Bands or G Shock? G Shock. I still wear a G Shock. I wear a G-Shock. It's my work watch. If I don't wear my Apple watch, I'm wearing a G-Shock. So G-Shock all day. Would you rather fight crime with Kim Possible or Danny Phantom? I really fuck with them both. Ah, You're killing me with that one. Honestly, 
I'd say Danny Phantom because like he has powers, bro. Kim Possible was just a little baddie that that has gadgets. Ha- yeah, but like, pow- oh, well, she's like the female Batman. Nah, I'm going Danny Phantom. Sorry. What about you? I'm going Kim Possible. I figured. I am because she can fight too. She yeah yeah she was a baddie. She wasn't up. that wasn't that what's her name from Even Stevens played the voice. Christy, Christy Carlson, Carlson Romano. Romano. Shout Red. out her. <laughs> Shout out her. Let's see. Side note. This flavor is discontinued, so that's why I put it in the Would You Rather. Okay. But Would You Rather Mountain Cooler Capri Sun Ooh. or Sobe Strawberry Banana Drink? Oh, don't do that to me. Wow. Oh. I'm picking Capri Sun. I, I, I'm leaning I'm leaning Capri Sun, too. That, I'm that, leaning, I'm that leaning Pacific Capri Sun. Cooler? Yeah, the Pacific oh Cooler slapped. I, I, are you sure that they discontinued it? Pacific and Mountain. Wow, that's a shame. Wow. What else? I got Would you rather Jimmy Neutron Jimmy Neutron's laboratory or Dexter's laboratory? I don't know. Like I feel like you can't go wrong either way cuz they're kind of on like the they're same both level. Geniuses. Like they're on the same level. However, I'm probably going to go Jimmy Neutron because if Didi don't get the fuck up out my laboratory, bro, like I don't want to be in there doing some shit and I see Didi scrolling by like what you doing? I mean, you have Sheen as a friend. Yeah, but Sheen, like, he's cool. We all have that idiot friend, don't we? You know I, I, mean? I think I am the idiot friend. Uh, Shit. Wow. I don't. Because you know how they say if, like, if you can't think of, like, the annoying friend, that means you are. And I'm like, I think I am uh, the idiot well, friend. Fair enough. <laughs> you got Last know? one. Okay. This is fashion. Oh, shit. Would you rather Abercrombie? Or Aeropostale. Oh, neither. I didn't shop there. What? Didn't Those shop are there. the highlights. Bro, I went of- shop. I was bougie. I went shopping at Macy's, bro. I was wearing Levi jeans, like Nike, Under Armour, Reebok. Like I wasn't in no Aeropostale. Like no. What? Please, white tees and and crispy Levi's. And Air Force Ones that aren't dusty. Circle back, always. So that was white the, forces. That, that was the last one. Yeah. All right. Well, um, at the end of the day, guys, let us know anything nostalgic we missed because obviously we missed a shit comments. ton of stuff and we don't want to have you guys here forever. Guys. So yeah, yeah, just let us know um, anything we missed, anything you guys agree with, anything that you guys want thrown out there. Just let us know. Um, again, I really want to just say thank you to everyone for the support on the first episode. It really means so much to us. We got so much love, so many people hitting us up saying, you know, we're on the right path. Um, bear with us. I- I'm currently in the process of learning how to video edit. So if the production isn't the best, it will be. I promise you. Guys you guys are along the journey with us. Yeah. And just... it only gets better and better and better and better. Uh, hop on the, oh, you can't see it. Hop on the rocket ship with us. Every everything's high level, guys. Everything's okay. high level. And that's not period. Um, again, subscribe, like, follow, share, comment. Um, the YouTube is the High Level Podcast, and hopefully within the week, I'm going to have this out on everywhere you listen to podcasts. So if you're not a watcher of the podcast and you're a listener of the podcast, I promise you guys that is coming very soon. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very very much. For and at the end of the day, the day's got to end. Just remember this, guys. Everything you do, do it high level. That's right. Much love, and we will catch you guys again next week. Peace.